remember that piece we took off the carters, that nice little sheep's tail that I had, right? So now what I'm going to do is what's called drafting. So I stretch it. If you take a piece of, of the wool and you just pull it together really tight, it doesn't move. But if I spread it out and pull it very loosely, you can see that I'm stretching it. And this is what I want to do. I want to stretch it so that when I spin, once the wheel goes, it's going to spin it and twist it. So what will happen is it's going to twist like this onto the spinning wheel. And using a, this is a modern spinning wheel. As you can see, it doesn't look like the one behind me at all, but you can twist and twist, it'll twist and twist the fiber. So now it's like a nice strong piece of wool or yarn. Once it becomes this, it's now gonna be yarn. So I've got a piece on here now, and I like to know who the sheep is that I spin. And I, what I want, this one that I'm spinning right now, this sheep's name is Victoria. So Victoria gave us her wool from her fleece this year. So it's always nice to know, so when I knit a sweater, I know that this is Victoria's wool, right? So here I am drafting it, pulling it, and as I pedal with my foot, I pinch the fiber, I draft and pull it, and let the pinch out and keep going and do keep doing that. So this will have to keep going until I've spun this whole bobbin full. Now you don't have to go really fast. It just goes nicely on its own. It's a very relaxing. And like I said before, they used to use the walking wheel behind me and would walk and it'd do the same thing, basically pulling the fiber, stretching it, putting a twist in, and spinning it onto the spindle in the walking wheel, or on this type of spinning wheel, it's called the bobbin. Now my spinning wheel is a little different as well. Because it is a modern one, I have a piece that slides so I can move where the wool is going to spin onto. Some of the older ones, and if you come and see one of the other ones we have here at Ling House, you'll notice they have little hooks and you have to then manually move it along so you fill your bobbin evenly. Let's put this back here again. I'll do a little bit more. And if you noticed, I'm always spinning to the right. Once I have this bobbin full, then I'm gonna fill another bobbin. And once two bobbins are full, then what we're gonna do is we will do what's called plying. So if you go to the store and you buy yarn, most of the time you'll find that it's two plies. Right now, this is just called a single. Once I've filled two bobbins, now I'm going to spin it in the opposite direction with the two threads, and then that's what's called plying. So then you'll get two threads, uh, two twists. So to, when it's plied, I have a piece to show you. So this was a piece of brown and a piece of white that's been plied together so you can actually see the stripe. So that would be what it looks like when it's plied. But you don't have to use two different colors. You could just use the same piece of, uh, uh, of fabric that you've been using. So there's a nice piece here of one that uh, is plied and this is called the skein. And I have another one here that I dyed. This one I dyed with um, onion skins. So just different sizes, different weights, different way people spin. Now, what if you didn't have a spinning wheel? You can spin using something called a drop spindle. So this is more of a portable type of way to spin. So basically it's the same and they, this one again is a modern one because you can see it does have a hook at the end. Um, 
Some of them are, this is a top whorl because the whorl here is on the top. Some you may find are what's called a bobbin whorl because the bobbin, the, the whorl is on the bobbin. But this one particular one is called top whorl. And basically it works the same. You have your fiber that you've pulled out, you've drafted a bit and you give it a spin and you keep drafting it some more. Now, if I pull too, see it's too tight, I can't pull it. I'm gonna to have to loosen it up so that I can pull it. Right, and give it a spin and keep spinning it. Again, always going to the right. Oops, let's stretch it out a bit. Now they say that uh, spinners have very soft hands and they do because all of the lanolin that's still left in the wool that you're spinning with. Now you can spin many different things. And you may have heard of people spinning things like wool. You can spin um, cotton. You can spin flax. You can spin alpaca. Uh, you can spin silk. And uh, I've even heard of people spinning rabbit and dog hair. So here we are just spinning off a little bit more. And so this is another fun activity to do to make yarn. Now this particular spindle, drop spindle, I purchased from uh, a, a woodworker and he made a beautiful spindle. But you can get different ones that are just very simple, or if you know someone, can make you a very simple one, which is basically a dowel with a big piece of wood there to give you your balance, and it works just as well. Let's see if I can get it to spin. <laughs> it has a nice balance to it. So those are something that you could do. Here at Lynn House too, they also have what's called a wool winder or a wool clock. Now, you can see it has all these little spokes on it. Once I've spun the yarn, then I'm going to wrap it around all these little spokes, sort of like you can see that this would wrap around like that. And you keep turning it and turning it has a little handle here and you turn it and depending on the size of it, Usually, it's like two yards around. This one, I think, looks a little smaller. I haven't measured it. But it's two yards around, and then you would turn the handle. And about the 40th turn, it should pop or make a click. Now, you may have heard the song, Pop Goes the Weasel. So that's what that means, is when it got to the 40th, which is about a ski, it counts. Some of them actually have counters on them. But if it made the pop, now you've got a skein of yarn. So this would be a skein. This is not quite a full skein. It hasn't got 40 uh, wraps on it, but this would be a certain measurement. And once you've got that measurement now, you now have a skein of yarn, and then you would know how many skeins of yarn you needed to knit something. So then you might want to knit something. So I have this lovely little jacket or a sweater. They're actually called a bosom buddy that they cover your top and they keep you nice and warm. You remember that some of these old houses, the heating here was not very good. You might only have a fireplace and so you would get cold. Also, I have some wristlet I would wear again to keep my wrists warm, but my hands are still free. I would also maybe knit some socks. So those are some of the things that you might knit. A lot of times they use the wool for weaving. You would weave carpets, you could weave um, bags, uh, you could weave fabric. Wool fabric would have been woven from the yarn that you had spun. If you've been to the Lynn house, you've heard the story of Mary Maria Lynn. Her daughter, Carrie Batts, had made this beautiful needlepoint using some wool. So again, it can be used for artwork, um, around the house. Uh, needlepoint was very popular. This one has been made into a cushion. Another piece of artwork we have at the Lynn House Museum is this yarn wreath. 
Again, young, this would be something that young ladies would be encouraged to do. And you would make this lovely wreath using yarn as an activity. So if you want to do something at home that doesn't take any equipment, you have, have some fiber, you can do what's called finger spinning. So you just take the fiber and you stretch it out, you're drafting, and then you just twist it. It's good to have two people, one holding one end and one holding the other. And then now you just keep twisting it and twisting it until you have, always in the same direction, until you have a piece of yarn. Another thing you can do is if you uh, have some uh, white wool at home, you could go and you could maybe do some dyeing. So I have a little sample of some things that have been dyed. So you can go and pick some of these flowers, like the Black Eyed Susans or the Golden Rod. You can pick some of these flowers and then you can dye different things. You can collect the onion skins from your house. I, I dyed with dandelions this spring. You might be able to collect uh, other, uh, like the golden rod. Um, another fun thing that I'm trying right now, I'm collecting and waiting to see if I have enough. I'm going to try and dye with avocado skins and pits. So anything you think you could try with, again, with the red cabbage or the beets and have a look at what colors you do actually get. You'll be very surprised that they're not the color that you expect sometimes. The fiber I have is from a Wind Ridge Farm. Uh, this sheep's name is Victoria. And um, I would like to encourage you to go off and visit Wind Ridge Farms on uh, their event days. In the spring, they do have a sheep shearing day and you can go up and see their sheep being sheared. At other times, you may go up and you will see the spinners as well as the dyers at work uh, dyeing and spinning the fiber from the sheep's from the farm. If you don't live in Whitby, you can always visit your own local wool shops. Thank you for joining me today. And I encourage you to come out to Lynn House and see some of our spinning wheels and um, our artwork. And possibly uh, you may see me here spinning one day.